years ago, I traveled the world, and I was searching for my future path. My journey took me to Asia, where I saw the power of buildings that reflected spiritual and cultural beliefs. To Central America, where Mayan temples represent the relationship between us and the universe. And to Australia, where my own relationship with all other living systems was cemented. Something shifted within me during this experience. I got to live and breathe the earth, notice the slightest form of life, watch in awe as a hundred kangaroos bounded across a plain, and see a sky full of so many stars. I thought I had entered a new universe. It was the definition of feeling alive, and then real life set in. I had to join the rest of society and spend most of my time inside. It made me wonder, why have we become inside creatures? Why have we passively accepted buildings that disconnect us from nature? I decided to become an architect, and here was my mission, to connect people and nature in the habitats that we create for ourselves, buildings. My vision is simple. What if when every building is created, it tells a story of that place? It tells a story of the thousands of species that have inhabited that place for the past 10,000 or more years. Currently, we just bring in the bulldozers, and we don't even stop to be curious. We have become inside creatures, with our opportunities to be immersed in nature reserved for our weekends or our vacations. So what if this were different? What if we're spending the 90% of our time inside? We're also connected to nature. What if the walls between inside and outside were broken down? I know intuitively that I feel more alive and more vibrant when I'm connected to the changing seasons and I can feel the change in weather on my skin. Research backs up my intuition. A simple window in a hospital room has been shown to reduce both patient stays and the amount of pain medication those patients receive. Test scores increase by 25% in classrooms that have daylight. None of this is surprising, let's face it. Not many of us like spending our days in dark or windowless rooms. And yet 45% of global office workers have no daylight. I spend too much of my time in convention centers with no windows, and when I emerge hours later to discover it is raining, when it was sunny, when I entered, I feel cheated and a sense of disorientation sets in. A study in the city of Portland showed that violent crimes in neighborhoods decrease significantly as tree size and density increases. Another study showed that people who live adjacent to a forest have healthier amygdalas, a region of the brain that processes memories and emotions. With an increasingly urbanized world, not many of us can live next to a forest. So why don't we bring nature inside? Why don't we bring forests, wetlands, and streams back into our cities and rewild our neighborhoods? It's a simple concept, and for thousands of years, it was the only way we knew how to build. Architecture was infused with ponds, atria, and gardens, brought animal and plant motifs, and brought the outside in by keeping plants and animals close. Indigenous architecture all across the world has shown incredible creativity at adapting those buildings to that climate, using evaporative cooling or wind tunnels in desert climates, for example. Buildings used to be a representation of who we are and the specific place they're built in. But once electricity was incorporated into our buildings, we no longer needed the warmth of the sun or the cooling breezes to stay comfortable. Windows started to seal up, buildings became wider, and the spaces in the middle darker and more removed from outside. Together with the global economy came a sense of placelessness. Buildings are a commodity rather than an expression of who we are or the place they're built in. 
As well as our reliance on technology, we are glued to the nearest power outlet and determined not to let a speck of sunlight get on our screens, further disconnecting us from nature. It is great to see the trend of bringing in plants and green walls into our buildings. But to really connect people and nature, we're going to need a lot more than this. We're going to need a concept called biophilic design, which translates literally to love of life. The potential of biophilic design is to do more than just bring us fresh air, daylight, and views in buildings. Renowned biologist E.O. Wilson has a theory that our brains have been mapped to think like a hunter-gatherer species for thousands of years. And this plays out both in nature and in our built environment. For example, prospect and refuge. We like to have a sense of what's coming towards us, prospect. But at the same time, we like to feel safe. You can see this playing out in a busy restaurant you do not have a reservation, and the only tables available will be in the middle, right? The booths around the edge or on the outside where you can feel safe but see what's coming towards you will all be taken first. Someday, watch where people hang out in pools of sunshine, on edges and shorelines, or with each other. We can't escape our instinctive sense of safety and security. There are many other intuitive patterns of behavior that happen when we're immersed in nature that we can bring into our buildings. The sense of exhilaration we feel at the edge of a cliff, fear and awe. The sense of excitement we feel when we discover something new, exploration and discovery. As well, the variation in light and pattern, and space, and texture that fills us with this sense of peace and tranquility when we're immersed in nature can all be brought into our buildings. Biophilic design is being used to transform our workplaces from monotonous beige cubicle farms to spaces that have varying acoustics, daylight, and interaction opportunities. It's also being used to transform our schools and hospitals, where it has been the norm to keep the young and the sick in sterile and dark environments. When kids are asked to draw their absolute favorite space, 96% of them will draw a space in nature. It is great that our kids are still connected to nature, but why do we not bring this connection inside? Would they have a different answer if they were kids in this classroom at the Birchie School in Seattle, where they can watch the rain flowing through their classroom and interact with the changing seasons? Biophilic design is being used all around the world. At this hospital in Singapore, you can pair your medical treatment with the sights and sounds of a tropical forest. The air that passes over your hospital bed carries the sound of birds. We are so busy creating sterile environments in our hospitals that we have shut out the power of nature to heal. For the Tuhoi Māori in New Zealand, the money they fought for as a settlement from the New Zealand government to recognize that their land was taken from them without their agreement was best spent first to build a cultural center, a place that could create a vision of the future that was not saddled with the past. The building is created from wood harvested from the Tuhoi lands and mud bricks created on site as part of a job training program. This building represents the relationship the Tuhoi people have with their land, with each other, and with all other living systems. Many global companies are starting to incorporate biophilic design. They've picked up on studies, such as the one from the University of Michigan, that show that there is a 20% increase in productivity after people spend one hour in nature. That's just one hour. Amazon sees the value. Their spheres at the new headquarters in Seattle are not merely a statement. They're specifically there so their employees can be immersed in nature and return to their desks refreshed and more productive. 
Google is implementing biophilic design guidelines, and Etsy has incorporated biophilic design into their headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. The only thing stopping us from living and working in biophilic buildings is us. We are not making it a priority. It is not necessarily more expensive to create biophilic buildings. It is often cheaper. If we can once again rely on the warmth of the sun or the cooling breezes to stay comfortable, we'll reduce our reliance on electricity and fossil fuels, contributing positively towards the reversal of global climate change. If we use materials from our region, we'll reduce the carbon impact of transporting them from all around the world. So what it comes down to is this. We are not only facing a choice between two different approaches to architecture. We're facing a choice between two starkly different views of human nature. Are we separate from nature? Or are we part of nature? If we assume that we are separate from nature, then we get buildings that look like this. Look familiar? They're everywhere. <laughs> As Winston Churchill once said, first we shape our buildings, and then our buildings shape us. And it's worth spending time in buildings like this forces us to become shadows of ourselves. And that's not only detrimental to our happiness, it's detrimental to our health. But there is another view of human nature, and one that says that we are intuitively and instinctively connected to the world with which we have evolved. If we assume this to be true, then we get buildings that look more like this. These are buildings where the inspiration for the whole form has been generated as an inspiration from nature, in this case, a termite mound. These are buildings where the whole space is created just by the shadows moving through it during the day. These are spaces where we can feel the textures changing under our feet, and we can hear the sound of the wind, where we can see the clouds moving across the sky and smell the rain, where we can interact with each other, and where the boundaries between inside and outside are broken down. Before we lose our connection to the world with which we have evolved and become accustomed to the barren tombs of our buildings, it is my hope that biophilic design can bring us more wildness biodiversity, and connection to each other while we are inside. Biophilic design is not just an approach to architecture that is good for the planet. It's an approach that allows us to celebrate all that is good about being alive, and in doing so, become a better, happier, and healthier version of ourselves. Thank you.